Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 16th, 2018 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Just a quick follow up on the extortion emails. Looks like some of the victims actually paid. We got a hold of about a dozen or so samples right now. And I think we found four Bitcoin addresses that have received funds. Now, a couple of these addresses have received more than one payment, kind of suggesting that the addresses were reused for different victims. As a little side project that came out of polling the Bitcoin addresses, via blockchain.info, did he wrote a quick tutorial about how to use command line tools like JQ to parse JSON formatted data, also how to extract blocked Bitcoin addresses from email. That's uh, probably a good indicator to look for some malicious emails like these extortion emails. Xavier ran into yet another crypto jacking exploit. In this case, existing JavaScript on a compromised WordPress site was modified to include the crypto jacking JavaScript. Usually we just have additional script tags being added, but here they actually just sort of appended it to existing JavaScript. Also, Xavier found that the JavaScript was not well recognized now by VirusTotal or by the scanners that are represented by VirusTotal back when the script hit on Friday. I hope that by now things look a little bit better, but the sample, of course, was heavily obfuscated. When we're talking about search engines for the Internet of Things, we usually refer to Shodan, the probably best known search engine that catalogs various systems exposed on the Internet. However, Shodan isn't the only one. Sumai, a similar system to scan the internet for open ports, appears to have pushed the ethical boundaries of such scans even further. Researchers from security firm NewSky found out that Sumai enumerated passwords for devices made by Dahua. These are these DVRs again now they didn't have to brute force the passwords. Instead, what Sumai did, it, it connected to the device on port 37,777. This port exposes a simple unauthenticated API that can be used to retrieve various internal settings from the device, including passwords. But it gets really tricky is that this does not just include accounts used to connect to the device, but in addition, it exposes credentials the user may have configured to allow the device to send email or to update a dynamic DNS service and more. So these are probably important uh, passwords for this particular user. The vulnerability was first disclosed back in November 2013. Sumai I didn't just connect to the port, but if the port was open, they also then sent the binary code that triggers the vulnerability and then they cache the response, allowing attackers to enumerate affected devices and retrieve passwords directly via Sumai's websites. According to NewSky, there are details for several tens of thousands of devices in Sumai that have been cached. Now, as I said many times before, never ever expose devices like DVRs, router admin interfaces, or other things to the internet. But then again, you also, in my opinion, shouldn't go around and try to retrieve credentials from these devices. And Cisco's Talos research team did publish a blog post with details about an interesting targeted attacks against iPhones in India. Now, this was very targeted. I believe 13 iPhones were exposed in total to this attack. But what was sort of tricky about it is that the attacker used an open source mobile device management system. These MDM systems are often used by enterprises to better manage mobile devices. Now, the way they work is that you first have to connect the mobile device to this management system and you 
do so by essentially importing a certificate from this mobile device management system and trusting it. Now, Cisco doesn't really know how this certificate got trusted in this case, but uh, they sort of show some screenshots how this could very easily be done uh, just via social engineering. The attacker in this case also uh, picked a domain name that kind of sounds someone plausible iOS certificate update.com and claimed that this was a certificate update to fix problems with the well known and often distrusted CN NIC certificate authority. But of course, once you accept the certificate and once you trust this mobile device management system, well, now the attacker has full control over the device. They can remove applications, they can install applications, and that's exactly what the attacker did here. They did install essentially backdoor versions of, for example, Telegram that would then copy messages back to the attacker. Now, Cisco was here very lucky. They actually got a hold of the server that ran this MDM software. So they had all the logs. That's why they know also very specifically how many devices were affected by this particular attack. Of course, it's very possible that there are multiple similar attacks going on right now. And this attack is really not all that difficult to conduct once you get the user to click OK on that certificate. Of course, the certificate could also be installed if a victim leaves the phone unattended. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And don't forget, Monday evening, if you're here in DC at Sands Fire, we do have our state of the internet panel. So hope to see some of you there. We'll have a couple of Raspberry Pis to give away. We also have some stickers. And most importantly, we do have a bunch of crypto equipment coming, including an original Enigma and a similar really nice systems that will be exhibited here. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.